there, my beautiful, lovely, delightful, good-looking internet friends. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me here today. Here's the thing. The last many videos on this channel, for the most part, have been pretty heavy subjects because there's been a lot going on in like the last three months uh, of my life and a lot of people's lives. So I thought today we would do something a little bit more lighthearted and fun and engaging, which is answering as many of your questions as I possibly can. I put a post up on my community page, also over on Instagram. If you aren't following me over there and you like seeing adorable puppy dogs all day long on my stories, check it out. And oh boy, we have some fun questions to answer today. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, then we're gonna dive in. I'm thrilled to say that one of my favorite sponsors, Skillshare, is sponsoring today's video. This is a company I love talking about because I actively use them every day. Skillshare is an online learning platform with literally thousands of classes to choose from on so many different topics. Anything creative to business to productivity and more. Right now, I've been going through MKVHD, his video creation course. As a YouTuber, I love to always be learning and figuring out what other people are doing. But if you're interested in photography or painting or how to organize your house better, they have a course for you and I'd highly recommend checking them out. Their courses are beautifully done and also have community tabs where you can interact with other people taking the classes and makes it a very engaging experience. Personally, I've been using them for over a year now. And fantastically, Skillshare has offered the first 1,000 viewers of this video who clicked the link in the description a full one month free trial to start playing around with your creativity and take different classes a day. Side note, this is actually how I got started with Skillshare. I tried their month free trial from a different YouTube video that I watched. I loved it and I kept paying for it. So check out that link in the description and now let's dive into a full Q&A. Out of all of the surgeries you've endured, what is one that you wish you didn't have? What a good question. I think I'd have to say the first surgery post amputation where they went in and removed bursa that had formed. I had a really bad fall a couple weeks after my amputation that caused a lot of damage and they thought the damage was limited to like just bursas forming. So they went in and fixed it, but it turned out a couple months later that they had to like cut more of my leg off anyways. So it was kind of a useless surgery. And so that would probably be top of my list. I do want to flip this question around and say, what, what's my favorite surgery? Which is a weird sounding question if you have not had dozens of surgeries in your life, but it'd probably be my wrist surgery. I'll show you the little scars here. We got those right there. Um, I was having issues like holding pens, holding pencils. I couldn't bend my wrist this way. And turned out there was a tendon that was kind of like way too tight. It was stuck. They went in, they fixed it. It was totally fine in a couple weeks. No problems, complications. It actually fixed the problem and that was amazing. Dorothy says, how are you doing? Seriously, are you doing all right? Y'all have been through it the last couple of weeks, especially just wanted to check in. I, I think I'm doing okay. It's definitely been a weird few months from uh, major medical issues with my kidneys to losing a dog, to having a surgery, to having a gun pulled on me. It just, it's been, it's been a weird couple months. The last couple days I've started to finally feel like myself. Like I'm motivated, I'm energized, my body's been all right. So right now in this moment, I am doing quite all right, actually. Trauma survivor Cynthia asks, beautiful Joe, is phantom pain a real thing when missing a limb or how do you cope with the pain mentally? Great question. Yes, phantom pain is 100% a real thing and it is absolutely bizarre. I think when you think of phantom pain, it's easy to think of, oh, is it like all in your head? Is it all made up? But what it actually is, is your nerves firing, kind of trying to connect with that part of your body that isn't there anymore. Because when you lose a body part, you know, they hack your leg off, your brain has a map of your body and that map doesn't necessarily get updated. And so you get a lot of weird sensations and a lot of pain sometimes. I do deal with phantom pain every day. I get these kind of zaps of electrical, just painful, painful energy. I am so grateful that mine usually only lasts a few seconds at a time, you know, a number of times throughout the day, but it is not prolonged, which makes it a lot easier to deal with. Doomcat asks, what's your favorite experience with your fans? What a great question. I'm grateful to say I have a lot of really lovely experiences with people who have watched my channels, but in real life, the first thing that pops to mind is back in 2019, I went to the Amputee Coalition Conference in San Antonio, Texas, and a fellow walked walked up to me there who recognized me and said, hey, I just want to let you know that, you know, I watched your channel and you're the reason that I had the courage to go through with this amputation. I really needed it, um, you know, to be able to walk, to be able to hold my kids, to be able to do anything, but it was terrifying to me. And watching you go through with this gave me the strength to make that decision myself and it's worked out really well. That was um, such an honor to hear. It was also terrifying knowing that I really did have some kind of influence on people. So it's important that what I share about my own journey is, is accurate, right? But that that was uh, an incredible experience to have. My favorite question I got, uh, how's the religious crisis going? Great question. Over the past year in particular, there's been a lot of deconstruction happening. I used to be a very, very religious person. I was very Christian for the first like 20, 25 years of my life, as in like my entire life was devoted to my church, faith, 
God, that was all I cared about. Um, but a lot of things happened and I learned a lot of things and a lot of my mindsets changed and that is no longer something I identify myself with, which is very weird to say because it was kind of the cornerstone of who I was for a very long time. So sometimes it does feel like a mental crisis. I'm like, who am I if this is not what I stand on all the time? But there's been a lot of freedom in that for me personally. Um, and so it's something that I'm still very much working through and figuring out what parts of that, if any, do I believe? What parts of other things do I believe? So uh, I don't know is is really the answer. Robin asked, if you could have any job in the world, what would it be and why? Uh, I love this question. This is one that could never actually happen, but picture it with me. I'm two years old. My mother puts me in gymnastics training. I grow up to be a Cirque du Soleil performer and I'm doing backflips off of crazy things and I'm super strong and I just think Cirque du Soleil is really cool and I would probably be like a gymnast if I could be anything. But uh, speaking in the real world, honestly, I think my dream job is what I'm doing right now. I'm pursuing public speaking at something I love doing uh, as restrictions are lifting, as the pandemic is hopefully continuing to be under control. I'm hoping to get in front of a lot more live audiences, but also talking to you in front of a camera. I love, I love being able to do this. And there's a bird that's talking very loudly outside my window. I'm so sorry if you hear that. My friend Sophie asks, what would you tell your orthopedic surgeons if you could go back and talk to them? As many bad experiences in the medical world as I've had, my surgeons, the, the men, it's always been men, weirdly, uh, who have worked on me have always been very talented. There have been some mistakes made. I think I would probably tell my uh, first amputation surgeon to make sure that he gets the leg the right length. It was cut like a little bit too long where it made getting fit for a prosthetic a little nerve wracking to see if we could actually fit everything down there. It worked out, it was fine, he didn't do anything wrong, but it definitely would have been nice to have that kind of more of the correct length, but it absolutely worked out because I had to have another amputation surgery. They cut another inch off and so it worked out in the end. Barry from um, Patreon asks, you did a previous post on sex after your amputation, but I'm wondering if any of your rehab team addressed your concerns. Uh, this is a really good question. No, this was actually never a conversation I had with doctors aside from when like when I was cleared for any kind of intimate activity. For me personally, I didn't have any major concerns. Um, I was a lot more like insecure with the fact that my whole body had changed and everything, but my husband and I did a great job of working through that. I do wish that maybe uh, they were more conversations open about this subject because it's something that a lot of people struggle with who, who have limb loss or limb differences or disability sometimes and sometimes not at all right but I think more resources and physician or PT kind of conversations about this would be great David from patreon asks do you enjoy winter sports skiing kneeboards or sleds it always seemed fun yes this last year I got to go snowboarding for the first time it was awesome and then I hated it and then it was awesome and then I hated it and thought I will never do this again and then I loved it um, it took a while to kind of get used to. I fall a lot, but I love snowboarding. I've never been able to do it. I've lived in Colorado for most of my life and I'm finally able to start. We already got our passes for this year. Brian and I are going to be going a lot and I am absolutely thrilled. Jins asks, do you find your animals have a positive impact on your chronic illnesses? Yes, I absolutely do. Owning pets, especially the amount that we have um, right now, we have two dogs. We had three, but one passed away. Like I said, um, a cat and three rats. It's a lot of work, right? It can be overwhelming sometimes when you're dealing with chronic illnesses, but I have found that animals really pick up on when I'm in pain or when I'm having a hard day. Uh, my dog, Sophie, she's a four-year-old German Shepherd. We've had her since she was a puppy, you know, full of energy, rambunctious, wants to do things. But when I would have a migraine, she would turn into a different dog and just be chill and hang out with me on the couch all day long. Um, all of my animals have always been like that, where they're very attuned to if I'm okay or not. And if I'm not okay, they're like right with me cuddling. And for me, that is such a positive thing. Also, having dogs for me um, does give me motivation to get moving. A big piece of managing and dealing with fibromyalgia, which is something that I have, is staying active, moving. So knowing that I've got to take the dogs out, they got to go for a walk, is a good way to kind of keep in that pattern. Ryan from Patreon asks, would you ever do a meetup provided the world is past the pandemic? This is a question I struggle with because I would absolutely love to. I love seeing people in real life. I do get overwhelmed by like large, long social events, but I, I love people, right? Um, I do have a lot of concerns about safety due to some past issues that I've had. Uh, so I absolutely would consider doing a meetup, but I would probably do it like alongside other YouTubers in a larger event kind of thing where I can meet people and say, hey, and hang out. But I'm still trying to figure out how I might feel most comfortable doing something like that. Scottish Blade Runner is a really cool username. Uh, hey, what's your favorite band or song that you can't get enough of? Right now, I have been listening to Bo Burnham's Inside, like his album of the 
special that he did on repeat. I've also listened to way too much of the Hamilton musical. But as far as bands, I love Need to Breathe, I love the classic crime, I love NF. Linkin Park will always be my favorite band. Louis Capaldi and many, many others. Marissa asks, how to cope with feeling completely out of place when everyone around is able-bodied? Man, this is a good question. It's really hard to always feel a little bit different. Um, I know that a lot of people in all kinds of groups deal with this, uh, kind of that feeling of being just a little disconnected and detached from the people around you because something about you um, is just different and that's just how it is. And, I, and I've definitely felt that a lot and I do my best to pretend that it doesn't exist uh, depending on the situation or to just be like, it's fine, whatever, but there are some times when it feels very isolating. It has been so important for me to find people I can talk to about that without a filter, people who also are in the same boat as me. That doesn't necessarily mean amputees. That can be anyone who, who has that similar experience of feeling on the outside of general or average society and talking about that stuff with people who get it, who understand, uh, really builds community, helps me feel not alone and kind of normalizes that feeling because at the end of the day when I'm in a group with a lot of people, I know so many people are going to be like, no, you're totally normal, you're just a little bit different, but you do feel outside sometimes and that's hard to deal with. So finding individuals or groups where you don't have to worry about that for a little while is really good. Do I like Marvel movies? Yes, absolutely. I have watched every one at least once, most of them twice or three times. My favorite Marvel creation is not a movie. It's actually a TV show called WandaVision. I think they did a really cool job of kind of managing how someone might work through trauma in the Marvel world. I loved it. Check it out if you haven't seen it already. Elizabeth Olsen, who acts in that, is just, oh my gosh, fantastic. Um, it's a great show. M asks, do you ever find yourself slipping into the why me mindset? I love this question because the answer is yes, absolutely. Uh, I've always heard that asking, you know, why me or having a pity party is this like really bad thing to do. It's very taboo. It's talked about like a sign of weakness. I know so many people who have said, I've never allowed myself to ask why me. And if that works for them, I think that's really powerful and wonderful. But for me personally, allowing myself to ask that question, kind of, you know, raging against the unfairness of the universe sometimes and being like, why? Why the heck did this happen to me? Why is this going on? And maybe indulging in a pity party for a few hours has been important for me to stay honest with myself and process through my emotions and acknowledge when I'm feeling that way, right? But as I do that, I've always gone into it with the understanding that I'm not gonna stay there. I might be asking why me and knowing that I'm never actually gonna get an answer and just sinking into pity of this sucks for a few moments or a few hours, but knowing that I'm absolutely not gonna let myself stay there. I'm not gonna make decisions based on that or operate my life out of that kind of a mindset, but allowing myself to feel it, I think is really okay. Larissa asks, what is your next goal in life? If I'm just being silly, uh, something I'd really love to do is act in something, act in anything. I've had a very little taste of it, a little bit of experience auditioning for a few things that kind of came up unexpectedly and I've loved it. It's so fun to kind of get your mind around the head of someone else, like around another character and how would they think, how would they interact. Being able to express emotions I might not normally feel comfortable expressing. It's just been a lot of fun. It's something I'd love to learn more about. I'd love to get involved with even locally with like plays or things like that when the world opens up a little bit more. Johanna from Patreon says, my question is, are you planning to do more live videos where you are painting? Yes, I would absolutely love to. I was doing live videos for a while, not that long ago, but experienced a lot of health issues that made it really difficult to keep any kind of schedule, made it difficult to be in front of a camera talking to live people for, you know, an hour or two on end. I would love to get back to that, but I don't know when that's going to happen, so hopefully soon. My Patreon friend John asks, are you going to do any more collabs with Annika? You two have great energy together, I think. I'm really glad you think so. I adore Annika. She is amazing. Uh, this is her. Uh, by the way, we've done a lot of fun, silly videos together. The answer is absolutely yes. We have one coming up that's that's planned. We've both had to recover from our individual surgeries. Thank you so much for, for so many fantastic questions, both fun and serious. If you would like to see another Q&A in the future, please let me know in the comment section down below and feel free to ask more questions down there. There are so many times when someone asks a question and it kind of triggers something in my brain to be like, oh, I should talk about that. Um, so let me know what you would like to hear about in the future on my channel. A big 
big thank you again to our sponsor. All of their information is linked down below. I'd highly recommend that you go check them out. To all of my patrons who asked so many of these questions, thank you for your continued patronship. I think that's a word. Um, your generosity is what keeps this channel going. It is why I'm able to do what I'm doing, so thank you. And to you watching this video right now, thank you for spending a few minutes out of your day here with me today. You could be anywhere else in the world doing anything else, but you chose to hang out with me for a few minutes, and I really appreciate that. I love you guys. I'm thinking about you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Have heard from the sky all about it. Down the river, high tide flows around it. Through the whispers of pines, I hear them sing. The more you love, the more you live. Do you ever feel like going back?